Woe to you of earth and sea. Welcome to Satan is My Superhero, a show about art, culture, history, and the devil. I'm your host, Judas Falling. In this episode, we will be discussing satanic U.S. presidents. Really? Well, you know, put it this way. If you're a U.S. president and you don't get called Satan, you're doing it wrong. When it comes to religion, George Washington set the tone for many U.S. presidents to come. Publicly, he was an avid churchgoer, but according to his own records, privately, not so much. A slave who'd escaped his employment, we'll call it, only judge, claimed Sundays were a day for wine and card games in the Washington household. There's literally nothing else Sundays are for. Literally nothing, except maybe washing the car. The honest cherry tree murderer was born and raised Church of England, but has been accused of being a deist. A deist might, for example, show no interest in the teachings of the prophets or so-called messiahs and prefer a more direct path to their creator. Some deists may even ignore Jesus and anyone who talks about him altogether. It has been well noted Washington spoke of God many times, but only a couple of known mentions of the illegitimate son Yahweh fathered with the virgin. Also not helping George's credibility on the Christian front was the fact that when he did go to church, it was noted by multiple observers that he would leave early and miss communion, exactly the kind of thing a deist might do. Also the kind of thing a busy general fighting a continent-wide war of revolution, or busy president running a fragile new country, or busy landed white man running an estate with over 300 slaves might do. It's not easy keeping an eye on all those slaves, you know. I'll say it, they don't want to be there, and that can be quite problematic. In a letter to his local slave dealer, Washington says, If they be good workmen, they may be from Asia, Africa, or Europe. They may be Mohammedans, Jews, or Christians of any sect. They may be atheists. I think we can assume George was an equal opportunities owner and was prepared to defend the First Amendment rights of his property. First Amendment is the best amendment. That's why we, I mean... They put it first. Washington was a Freemason, which for most of us is no big deal, but the weird rituals and secretive ways of the Masons have always made them a prime target for anyone who wants to throw satanic accusations. Freemasons. Most of the founding fathers and the first handful of presidents were all Masons. A few US presidents after the period have been Freemasons, and conspiracy theories regarding this connection are bound. He believes the CIA killed JFK and fed a bunch of pills to Marilyn too. John Adams was the first US president to actually live in the White House, and he famously had a dog called Satan. While not being a sign of Satanism, it does justify the title of this episode, and that's why I mention it. Satan, sit! Sit, Satan! Sit! What a good boy, Satan! Good boy! Now get daddy's slippers. Thomas Jefferson was accused of being an atheist, or at the very least, a deist like Washington. He did not help his cause by producing his own scrapbook version of the Bible. He literally cut and paste passages from the New Testament into a scrapbook. Now, kiddies, when I say cut and paste, I mean he literally used scissors in the RL and cut actual paragraphs out of the Bible. Then when it came time to paste, he used actual paste. That's right, paste is a real thing. So he pasted the passages into his own homemade scrapbook Bible. Interestingly, his more craft than arts Bible omitted any references to Jesus having supernatural powers. So no water in the wine? No barefoot water skiing? Nice way to take all the fun out of Jesus, man. The president of Yale once said if the immoral atheist Jefferson were elected, all the virgins in Connecticut would be molested. Like, was that a threat? Was he going to go out and molest them all himself? That is how I read it. A young Thomas Jefferson wrote his friend John Page a letter in which he sarcastically blamed Satan for drilling a hole in his roof right above where he laid his watch that night. So the rain dripped directly on it while he slept. Oh, he noticed. James Madison was another deist and, let's call it, heavy contributor to the Bill of Rights, featuring the all-important First Amendment, which gives Catholics, Mormons and Satanists the right to exist in the land of the free and home of the brave. As you can imagine, calling political opponents Satan is a thing in early Christian America. So much so, I'm trying not to get stuck focusing on it. But with the exponentially rising stakes of impending civil war, the politics get real dirty as Abraham Lincoln enters the scene. Satan gets thrown around a lot at him, and I would argue more effectively by him. 
One of his more subtle demonising of his opponents was in his very famous acceptance speech from 1858. The speech is often referred to as his house divided speech because he quotes gospel with the line, A house divided against itself cannot stand. We can see how a line like this can easily be applied to pre-Civil War America. In Mark, the rest of the line goes, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. Whether he intended to or not, he just quietly linked his political enemies to Satan in a very nice way. Interesting side note, despite Abraham Lincoln being the one history will remember as a vampire hunter after that biopic, it's Andrew Johnson who actually crossed paths with a real-life vampire. Well, kind of. A sailor known as James Brown... A No relation. ...murdered two shipmates on a fishing vessel and was accused of drinking their blood. He was sentenced to death, but Johnson commuted his sentence to life imprisonment. Ouch, that's a really long time for a vampire. President James Garfield was murdered by Charles Julius Gittu in 1881. Gittu would later claim a divine voice had told him to kill the president. Gittu did admit that he considered the voice might be the devil, but eventually decided it must be God because it was telling him to shoot an unarmed man in the back with a high-caliber pistol. It had to be God. Oh, that's totally out of Yahweh's playbook. And just one last point on Gitu. Earlier in his life, Gitu had joined a sex cult where no one would have sex with him. In so much? Say what you like about John Wilkes Booth. At least he could get laid. Now, according to Revelation, the Antichrist will rule for 42 months. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Chester A. Arthur, who became president due to the filthy murder of Garfield, became US leader for 42 months. But probably not the Antichrist. I mean, we're all still here, aren't we? As long as you don't snap and shoot the boss. You're doing fine. And even if you do snap and shoot the boss, as long as you get away from the cops. Kansas evangelist and all-round hater Gerald Burton Winrod accused FDR of being an antichrist. In his 1945 book, The Antichrist and the Atomic Bomb, he claimed FDR and Stalin were planning a Jewish-led communist New World Order. I thought we weren't mentioning the New World Order. You know what? Alleged terrorist group Concerned Christian believe the office of the US president is the seat of the Antichrist. In the 1980s, the cult was started by Kim Miller, a marketing man for Big Pharma. Kim originally formed the group as an anti-cult organisation, which I have to give it to him, that is a genius way of finding sheeples stupid enough to join your cult. Miller also claims the name Harry S. Truman is part of prophecy in Revelation. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Author George E. Lowe, who has a couple of books called Stalking the Antichrists about U.S. presidents, defended Truman as only a near Antichrist due to his body count of innocent Asians only being around six and a half million. And genocide is Yahweh's thing anyway. Quality Assurance Officer Gabriel J. Kohler published the book Unmasking the Beast, The Second Reign of JFK, in which he asserts there is clear evidence in Scripture that JFK will rise from the dead and signal Armageddon. He quotes Revelation. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And the world wandered after the beast. So watch out for JFK's zombie corpse at the next Democratic National Convention trying to spark up a super PAC. Hunter S. Thompson opened the eulogy he wrote for Richard Nixon with a quote from Revelation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. He then went on to say... Richard Nixon was an evil man, evil in a way that only those who believe in the physical reality of the devil can understand it. In a recording Nixon made in the Oval Office, evangelist Billy Graham is heard to tell him, During the latter days, Jews will be divided into the remnant of God's people and the synagogue of Satan. The second group consists of those Jews in league with the devil who have a strange brilliance about them and are behind all your religious deceptions. 
synagogue of Satan appears in Revelation and has been used to spank the children of Israel for the last two millennia. Since 1979, Iranian leaders have been calling the US the Great Satan, and they call Israel the Little Satan. Oh, how delightful! Ronald Reagan famously consulted with an astrologist, which is not the Christian thing to do. Oh, Ronnie, I blame Hollywood. Conspiracy theorists and other fringe elements have found an awesome amount of connections between Reagan and the number of the beast. To start with, Ronald Wilson Reagan, each of his three names, have six letters in them. So, for the dummies out there, that's 666. Don't call people dummies. Math illiteracy is serious. In his very first film, Canute Rockney, All-American... Sounds like a porno to me. He played the Gipper. Totally a porno. The Gipper was a member of Notre Dame's football team's backfield known as the Four Horsemen. It is claimed that this was the 666th film released by Hollywood. I couldn't find anything to back this up, and how would you even count that? In 1966, he was running for the Californian governorship and won his first primary in June, which, if you think of the way many people write that numerically, it makes 6 slash 66. What's that sound? Oh, it's a very long bow being drawn. On election day, November the 4th, 1980, when Reagan attained the presidency for the first time, the winning pick three lottery number in Maryland was 666. Four years later, the election was on November the 6th, 1984. Four days after that, on November the 10th, the Maryland pick three lottery drew 666 again. The only real connection I could find between Reagan and Maryland was that he got his polyps removed there in 1985. The conspiracy theorists like to lump the New Jersey Pick 3 lottery in this story, but I researched the records for both draws, and while the Maryland checks out, as mentioned, I couldn't find 666 in the New Jersey results around those times. It is also claimed that Reagan had said $666 was added to new car prices by government regulation. He didn't. He said, Government regulations, right or wrong, have added some $600 to the cost of a car. It is also claimed his first budget projected government revenue of $666 billion. I couldn't find Ronnie quoting this anywhere, but in the administration's fiscal year 1983 economic program presented to the 97th Congress, projected government receipts were $666 billion. Oh, Ronnie, you brazen cad. And according to the budget of the United States government, outstanding federal loans at the end of 1988 were $666 billion. You can also find a June 2000 report in Clinton's archive showing an expected $455 billion deficit ending up being a $211 billion surplus, a difference of $666 billion. Oh, well, look no further. There's your Antichrist. And the 2017 US deficit was $666 billion. Oh, that's just a coincidence. In 1981, Ron was shot and recovered from the wound. People like to associate this with the line from Revelation we heard earlier about JFK, but it wasn't a fatal head wound. It is claimed his 84 re-election campaign cost $66.6 million. The only number I found from a source I trusted to be legit came to around $76 million. While not very satanic, it is a reasonable amount to pay for a four-year lease on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Reagan himself said this of money in politics. Politics is supposed to be the second oldest profession. I have come to realise that it bears a very close resemblance to the first. It is claimed in 1999 a vote in California to create a Reagan licence plate passed 66 to 6. It didn't. It passed 30 to 4. I had one of those plates on my Malibu Porsche. One of the blogs I read on the subject ended by saying, faced with all of this evidence... It's just not rational to believe Ronald Reagan isn't the Antichrist. Well, case closed. But no. In a lecture given at the International Prophecy Conference, a bloke by the name of Jerry Rowland Church claimed Bill Clinton may be a descendant of Nero and compared Clinton's face to first century statues and coins featuring Nero. This lecture can be purchased on VHS videotape under the title Tickling the Tail of the Dragon, Volume 1, Bloodline of the Antichrist. Let's go, boy! 
going to take a short break from the show right now to talk about my sponsors and Patreon. I don't currently have sponsors or Patreon, but if you'd like to support the show, you can do that by buying my novel. It's called Chaos Machine by Judas Forley. It's available through Amazon. You don't need a Kindle to read it. Almost any digital device will do. Don't forget, Chaos Machine by Judas Forley. Now, back to the show. If you try hard enough and keep the junior abbreviated, George Walker Bush Jr.'s name becomes three sets of six, as long as you never admit to yourself it's actually two sets of six, a set of four, and a set of two. More impressively, W got outed by Hugo Chavez at the UN in 2006. The devil came here yesterday. It smells of sulfur still today. He gets an upset tummy when he travels. Now, up until the internet age, I don't think any presidents have been called Antichrist, Satan, or the devil as much as Barack Obama, and I think we all know why. Hey, people who call other people Antichrists aren't always racist. I mean, you know, not every time. Anyway, along with all the nuts proving Obama is the Antichrist through biblical numerology and vague prophecies, there's an interesting subculture of people posting about their dreams of Obama being the Antichrist on YouTube. Mummy, I had a bad dream. Oh, was it about that foreign-born Al-Qaeda sleeper agent, Islamic Satanist Obama being the Antichrist? Um, no. Get back to bed. I think the most hysterical white man to demonise Barack is Faithful World Baptist Church pastor Stephen Anderson, who famously delivered a sermon in 2009 entitled, Why I Hate Barack Obama. Not very Christian, is it? In 2014, he said this about Obama's mother. We could all go to Walgreens and get a DNA test and sell it today if Obama would submit to it. Right? I mean, don't they sell it at Walgreens for a hundred bucks? But the point is, though, we can't figure it out because she was such a whore. You know where I come from, the human race on planet Earth? You just don't talk about someone's mother. What piece of <laughs> raised this guy? This song is not a the chosen one. That's right. We have arrived where I imagine many of you thought we would have started. I'm contractually bound to make no more comments from this point on. A 2019 poll claimed that 27.7% of Americans believe Donald Trump is doing the work of the devil. And that's all I could really find relating Trump to the devil. So yeah, that was disappointing. No, I'm joking, of course. I found heaps. But I want to end this episode on a positive. I want to look at the people who think Donald John Trump is the chosen one. Conceal and carry licensed Texas Republican and former Secretary of Energy Rick Perry believes using more fossil fuels will reduce the sexual assault rate in Africa and Trump is the chosen one. According to Trump's own Twitter account, renowned conspiracy theorist Wayne Allen Root said the Israelis... Love him like he's the second coming of God. Does Wayne understand that according to Judaism, God hasn't been here the first time yet? Like, not in the way his God came here. Have any of Wayne's many, many, many Israeli friends let him know they don't think Jesus is Lord? Does Wayne know anything? In a 2019 survey conducted by the Salt Lake Tribune, 53% of white Pentecostals believe Trump was anointed by God. You know what I always say about surveys? Surveys are taken by people who want to take surveys. So if you're like me, you've never been represented in a survey. CEO of the multi-hundred million dollar Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, renowned Putin apologist and son of Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, claims his dad voted for Trump and believes God showed up to the 2016 election. Doctor of what we don't know, Lance Wallnow, has a book about Trump called God's Chaos Candidate. Chaos is a good word to have in a book title. Just saying. Dr. Lance is also part of POTUS Shield, a group that organises mass prayer. They have a list of prayer points available on the website for Donald. So if you'd like to pray for the Don, can you please cover the following? Wisdom, courage, protection. Relationship with God to deepen. Not yours, Donnie's. Godly and strong cabinet and counsel. Again, that's for Mr. President, not you. Family and internal cohesion and hunger for the word of God. Again, they want Trump to hunger for the word of God. You're already taking up enough of God's time. 
They also have prayers for other trumpets, but my favourite was the prescribed prayer points for you to cover when praying for Melania. Melania requires... Wisdom and internal strength. Protection. That's nice. Relationship with God to deepen. Meh, yeah, pedestrian. Supernatural insight in all areas of influence. Supernatural insight in all areas of influence. They want you to pray Melania into a demon spy for Christ. My favorite Trump supporter is former fireman turned prophet and exclusive receiver of the true word of Yahweh, Mark Taylor, the man behind the Trump prophecy. He has published pages and pages of Yahweh telling him Trump has been chosen as the right man for the time, and we could go into it all, but my favorite piece of work Marky Mark has published is a prayer he wrote to scramble enemy radar. That's right, he has a prayer designed to scramble enemy radar. I think he means it quite literally, like this isn't a metaphor. I think he is genuinely trying to deploy tactical prayer assets on the battlefield. They've made a movie about this guy. It has real TV actors in it and everything. Anyway, the point is, with all this Trump love, is a whole lot of Christians have closed their eyes and tied themselves to the Trump train. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. I said I wanted to end on a positive. But anyway, here's a prayer from the President's official spiritual advisor to the White House, Paula White. In the name of Jesus, we command any satanic pregnancies to miscarry right now. We declare that anything that's been conceived in satanic wombs, that it'll miscarry. I don't know if Trump makes a good Antichrist candidate or not. At the time of recording this episode, he hasn't started World War III, and I do think that's kind of important. But what I am pretty sure of is that if there ever is an Antichrist, they will be lauded by hate preachers like Paula White. And that's why Satan is my superhero. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, subscribe, you know the drill. But more importantly, please recommend this show to just one person. I mean literally one person. Choose that person well. Love you, Donald. Wait, why are we hailing Satan?